A man was grabbing Yin Wudao's collar, raising him up in the air, and asking him if he knew who he was, and Yin Wudao asked him if he wasn't the trash of the Jiang family. The man called Yin Wudao a dog and declared that he should open his eyes because he is the Dragon King Palace Lord, Dragon King Xiao Chen. Yin Wudao was surprised when he heard that Xiao Chen announced that he was the legendary Dragon King. Xiao Chen explained that he purposely hid himself there in order to live a simple life, yet he dared to steal his woman, and Yin Wudao immediately begged that he was wrong and requested that Xiao Chen forgive him. But Xiao Chen smiled evilly and insisted that in the dictionary of the Dragon King, there is no word called forgiveness. Xiao Chen crushed Yin Wudao's neck, and it made a loud cracking sound. He left Yin Wudao's body on the ground and walked towards his men, who were bowing at him. Yin Wudao's soul left his body, and he lamented that just because of that, Xiao Chen killed him. Suddenly, a lady arrived. Yin Wudao's soul, who was floating around, was enchanted when he saw the lady who suddenly appeared in front of his body, and the lady stated that the system detects that the villain bad guy died, so it should be him. The lady started transferring the god-tier arch-villain system to Yin Wudao. Yin Wudao's soul was alarmed when something suddenly started sucking him in. He was being sucked back into his body. Yin Wudao was so surprised, and his eyes glowed menacingly as he opened them. As Yin Wudao started regaining consciousness, he saw Xiao Chen's mother-in-law asking Xiao Chen if he thought he could come there at will, and demanded that he should get out immediately. And Xiao Chen retorted that Ruo Zhu is his wife and he will solve that problem himself, so he doesn't need outside help. Ruo Zhu's mother asked Xiao Chen if he wanted to finish it and what he was going to do about it when the Jiang family owes 10 billion, and she argued that all Xiao Chen does is waste, so Ruo Zhu would be blind if she chose him, while on the other hand, Yin Wu Dao was so surprised when he realized that he was not dead. Yin Wu Dao looked so troubled as he wondered if he was reborn. He looked at his watch and realized that he had just returned to half an hour before he was strangled to death by the Dragon King, Xiao Chen. Suddenly, a system screen appeared in front of Yin Wudao, notifying him that the god-level arch-villain system had been activated and the system task had been published, which was a mission to survive, and Yin Wudao inquired what it was. A 30-minute countdown suddenly began, and Yin Wudao, who was startled to see it, exclaimed that, in other words, after half an hour, he would die. Yin Wudao was startled again when the lady beside him suddenly called him and asked what happened to him. It was Zhang Ruozu, the future wife of the Dragon King, and Yin Wuda was horrified when she leaned over to touch his forehead and ask him why he was sweating so much, which startled Xiao Chen. Xiao Chen's expression looked so grim while he glared at Yin Wuda. Yin Wudao immediately pushed Jiang Ruozu away and warned that she shouldn't come closer while, in his mind, he was wondering if Jiang Ruozu wanted him to die fast. Jiang Ruozu's mother immediately tried to appease Yin Wudao and insisted that he shouldn't be angry because the useless bastard, Xiao Chen, is not worth his anger. Xiao Chen was alarmed when Jiang Ruozu's mother revealed that due to Yin Wudao's kindness, he has helped the Jiang family by investing tens of billions of dollars, and to be honest, Jiang Ruozu has decided to marry Yin Wudao, and Yin Wudao was so horrified when he heard that that he couldn't help but wonder if all of them are not worried about his life after that. Xiao Chen announced that the 10 billion investment was arranged by him, and the director Xiao of the leading company was him. But to his surprise, Zhang Ruozu suddenly slapped him across the face, demanded that he should shut up, and asked him if he claimed that the Xiao surname could be related to the Xiao leader. Zhang Ruozu insisted that Xiao Chen shouldn't claim something that belongs to others, as it will only make her look down on him, and Yin Wudao panicked. Xiao Chen was surprised when Zhang Ruozu stated that the Zhang family doesn't collect useless trash, so he would kick him out of the Zhang family, and when Yin Wudao heard that, he exclaimed that it was over and he would die. Xiao Chen's expression turned dark as he retorted that Zhang Ruozu would regret it. Yin Wudao was horrified, and he shouted that Xiao Chen was going crazy, so they should stop him. While Yin Wudao was in a panic, Zhang Ruozu and her mother approached him, and as the mother warned that he shouldn't hit Xiao Chen impulsively because it will only get his hands dirty, Zhang Ruozu declared that she has no relationship with Xiao Chen, so for her sake, she requested that he let him go. But in Yin Wudao's mind, he thought that Xiao Chen is the one who won't let him go. But Xiao Chen asserted that they shouldn't be silly because it was a fight and he is the Dragon King, and as three men appeared to bow down to him, the Dragon King grinned. According to rumors, the Dragon King Palace was the number one organization in the overseas underground world with great power and respectable status, and he had three generals under his command, Giant Liuo, the God of Wealth, and the Tyrannical God. The God of Wealth was tearing a contract in half and proclaimed that they dared to oppose the Dragon King, so those tens of billions of contracts will soon be cancelled. The tyrannical god pulled out his phone and boasted that just a phone call from him would make their Yin Zhang family disappear from Zhang Cheng. 
Giant Luo pulled out his guns and declared that as long as the Dragon King gives orders, people will start killing. Ian Wuda was spiraling as he muttered that it was a dead end again, and he wondered if he was going to die again and if the villain only deserved to be the protagonist's stepping stone. He lamented that he couldn't take it. Xiao Chen pronounced that he won't accept requests for mercy, but he will give Yin Wu Dao a worthy way to die. Yin Wu Dao glared at Xiao Chen and retorted that he didn't want to beg for his mercy. Xiao Chen remarked that even though Yin Wu Dao's Yin family is strong in China, in front of his Dragon King Palace, he is like dust. But Yin Wu Dao asked him if that was real and stated that he could destroy him with just one phone call. Xiao Chen laughed at Yin Wu Dao and taunted that he was so arrogant that he wanted to see who he was going to call and whether they would be able to fight him. After 15 minutes, Lu Man, the Red Shield Special Operation Team Captain, arrived with her group, and she commanded that they should catch them all. Yin Wu Dao smiled evilly while showing them his phone to let them see who he had called. Jian Liuo, the God of Wealth, and the Tyrannical God were all slammed to the ground and the team ordered that they shouldn't move and hand over the gun. While his generals were being restrained, Xiao Chen was horrified when Lu Man approached him and declared that he had been arrested as he is the leader of an illegal organization from overseas and he has been on the International Red Shield's wanted list for a long time, so he should quickly confess or they will use force. Lu Man handcuffed Xiao Chen, and as he was being taken away, Xiao Chen accused that instead of using Yin Wu Dao's martial arts, he cheated, and Yin Wu Dao apologized and admitted that he was the villain there. Lu Man was pissed, so she pushed Xiao Chen and demanded that he should obey quickly because she doesn't care whether he is the Dragon King, the Shira, or whatever because it won't do her any good. She turned to Yin Wudo and thanked that thanks to his report, they have caught internationally wanted Xiao Chen, so he will be given a reward of 500,000 per person and tax exemption as a gift. Yin Wudo smiled brightly and expressed that it was an honor to be able to work together and benefit each other. The system congratulated Yin Wudo for completing the task and successfully obtaining one heaven's vanity point, and when Yin Wudo saw that, he noted that he could see that if he completed the task, he would be able to get Heaven's Vanity Points, but he just doesn't know how to use that point yet. Yin Wudao's face suddenly lit up when the system informed him that it copied Xiao Chen's Golden Finger technique and asked him to choose whether to copy or force fetch it, and Yin Wudao exclaimed that it was like defeating monsters and getting the advantage. With an evil look on his face, Yin Wudao chose force fetch, and he sneered that since Xiao Chen declared that there is no forgiveness in his dictionary he wouldn't forgive him either. Suddenly, someone knelt on the ground. It was Xiao Chen, and as Lu Man angrily warned that she warned him not to play around, Xiao Chen confessed that he felt that his body suddenly lost its strength. Meanwhile, Yin Wudao grabbed Zhang Ruozu's waist as he laughed maniacally and gloated that it was because of her, and he was glad to see it. But Zhang Ruozu was startled and uncomfortable, and he lamented that even though Xiao Chen was the famous Dragon King, he couldn't fight the evil and cunning Yin Wudao. Yin Wudao received a text notification from his bank regarding the reward he got for the report, and while Yin Wudao was amused and remarked that the price was transferred quickly, so their work is fast too, Zhang Ruozu's eyes were twinkling as she saw that Yin Wudao has over 30 billion in his account. Zhang Ruozu's mother commented that Xiao Chen has already been arrested, the investment was unacceptable, and the Jiang family is still facing bankruptcy, so she would ask Yin Wudao to fulfill his promise earlier, but Yin Wudao stated that it depends on Zhang Ruozu's attitude. Yang Ruozu looked so uncomfortable as she explained that ever since Xiao Chen came there, although they are not husband and wife, she has never treated him badly, but he was just a liar who didn't reveal his identity to her. She gritted her teeth as she resolved that at that moment, if she wanted to save her family, she had to persuade Yin Wudao, but he was a playboy, arrogant, and domineering, so she wondered if her life would be ruined because of her family. With an awkward look on her face, Jiang Ruozu requested that Yin Wudao save her Jiang family, and Yin Wudao replied that he could save her Jiang family, but he asked her if she knew what to do. Suddenly, Yin Wudao saw that Jiang Ruozu had a favorability level of minus 100, which was labeled as hate, and he wondered what it was. The system notified Yin Wudao that a new quest was released. It was a side quest to capture the heart of the cute girl, Zhang Ruozu, and when her favorability level reaches 90, the mission is complete with a quest reward of one heaven's vanity point and business talent. Yin Wudao was surprised when he saw that he needed more than 90 because it was at minus 100 at that moment. Zhang Ruozu looked so disgusted as she pouted her lips, and she remarked that for the sake of the Zhang family, she had to kiss that jerk. But she was startled when Yin Wudao responded that she hates him but must pretend to like him, so it must be very uncomfortable, and Jiang Ruozu immediately denied that she hates him. Yin Wudao glowered at Jiang Ruozu, asked her if she was saying it from her own heart, and declared that investing 10 billion yuan was nonsense as he is not their licking dog. But for a business proposal, there is still a lot to talk about. He smiled evilly and announced that he would use 10 billion to acquire Grub Jiang. 
Jiang Ruozu's mother was horrified when she heard that Yin Wudao would acquire it. On the other hand, Jiang Ruozu's expression turned more sour and her favorability level lowered to minus 120. Yin Wudao walked away and remarked that he knew it was a difficult choice for Jiang Ruozu, but it was the only way, and after they thought about it, they should let Jiang Ruozu come to his villa to sign the contract. The system suddenly warned Yin Wudao that it had found that likes were dropping rapidly, so it asked the host to change strategy. But Yin Wudao dismissed it and claimed that it shouldn't worry because he is more skilled at dealing with women than the system. A red car was driving in front of a house beside the Jiang River. It was a luxurious car, and after it pulled over, the driver immediately came out of it. It was Yin Wudao, and as his men bowed down and greeted him, he announced that he knew he didn't give them a vacation, and he was the one who got unlucky. As he handed his sunglasses to one of the men, Yin Wudao repeatedly called someone named Kingya, and urged that they should hurry out. Meanwhile, someone was peeling an apple, and they accidentally cut themselves. It was Su Kingya, and she looked so worried as she sucked on her injured finger. Su Kingya came to greet Yin Wudao, and she remarked that he came home so early that she didn't expect it, so she was sorry that she hadn't prepared his hot water for bathing yet. Yin Wudao saw that Su Kingya has a favorability level of 90, which was labeled as love, and a fear level of 80, which was labeled as sacred. He was surprised, and as he observed that he did not imagine that Su Kingya really loved him, but he wondered what was with that fear. He inquired Su Kingya what happened to her hand. Su Kingya suddenly avoided contact with Yin Wudao and replied that it was nothing. Yin Wudo remembered how he grabbed Su Kingya's hair, and he looked so enraged as he declared that he was very angry at the moment, so she should quickly prepare the hot water for the bath. Recalling the horrified look on Su Kingya's face, Yin Wudao commented that maybe it was what scared her. Yin Wudao facepalmed and admitted that after experiencing death, remembering that incident made him feel something. But he smiled evilly and remarked that, however, it was perfect for his role as a villain. Su Kingya was startled when Yin Wudao tapped her on the shoulder and recalled that he remembered that they have a room for meditation, so she should go and clean the room quickly as he wanted to use it. Su Kingya walked away as she agreed and noted that she would go immediately, and Yin Wudao concluded that even though he got her as a repayment of the debt, because she loves him, she will treat her well in the future, and he will not let her live in fear anymore. A few moments later, Yin Wudao was in the meditation room, and while meditating, he was enclosed in golden beams of aura. Yin Wudao was concentrating as he gathered a golden aura in between the palms of his hands. Suddenly, the lady who gave him the system arrived, and she remarked that even though she helped him open his cultivation, his cultivation speed is really fast, so he is really a talent, and it seems that she did not choose the wrong person. The lady saw the pendant Yin Wudao was wearing, and she observed that that piece of jade was a good treasure, and could help her escape the pursuit of the wandering gods, so she quickly jumped into it. A powerful aura surged inside Yin Wudao as the lady entered his jade pendant. After Yin Wudao finished meditating, he exclaimed that the Jialong infuriating Kai was truly an incredible technique because, after cultivating to cleanse the marrow and cut tendons, his whole body felt comfortable, so it seems to be the dirt that comes out after cultivating, just as recorded in the books. Suddenly, Su Kingya entered the room, and as she called Yin Wudao and informed that she had brought him ginseng soup, she had a worried look on her face. Yin Wudao was surprised when he saw Su Kingya, and Su Kingya blushed when he started flexing his body and observed that with that good body in front of her. She could endure the first year and that he was a little surprised that she could last long enough, but he could see that she was really excited, which made Su Kingya stutter. But Yin Wudao suddenly joked that he was kidding, gulped down the ginseng soup, and complimented that it was delicious. Su Kingya suddenly asked Yin Wudao if he could let go of the girl he brought last night and mentioned that she heard that she had a soldier brother, so she was afraid that he would take revenge on him. But to her surprise, Yin Wudao just asked her who the girl was and remarked that he was sweating so much so he would go take a shower first. Su Kingya looked so worried as she expressed that she hoped Yin Wudao wouldn't commit another crime. A few moments later, Yin Wudao had just stepped out of the shower, and he was wondering what girl Su Kingya was talking about and why he didn't know. While he was drying his hair, he suddenly noticed something. He was looking in the mirror, and he looked so horrified as he wondered what it was. Yin Wudao was leaning in toward the mirror when he suddenly heard a sound. He looked so horrified and speechless when he saw a silhouette lying behind the curtains. Yin Wudao quickly grabbed the curtain, and when he opened it, he discovered a white-haired, beautiful lady lying on the bed. Yin Wudao was so horrified, and he remarked that he could see that Su Kingya should talk about it. He recalled that the girl was standing in the middle of the stage in a club. Yin Wudao was drunk with Jiang Renji, one of the four young masters of Jiang, and as he noted that the girl appears like a newcomer and she looks very attractive, Jiang Renji was intrigued, and as he asked Yin Wudao if he liked her, he offered that he would wrap her up for him. 
Back in the present, Yin Wudao was so troubled, and he commented that the lunatic actually brought the girl there. Yin Wudao was in a panic, and he explained that it was the reason why he couldn't be friends with Jiang Renji, with the crime he was committing, and presumably the word dangerous has something to do with that. Suddenly, the system notified Yin Wudao that it had detected that Lin Feng was approaching, and the system had issued a new mission, which was for him to stay alive, and Yin Wudao was surprised that it was not finished yet. Yin Wudao quickly ran towards a monitor. He could see a bulky man charging towards one of his men, and he looked so horrified as he exclaimed that, sure enough, someone barged in. The man was moving swiftly, and he hit one of Yin Wudao's men with his elbow. Yin Wudao's man coughed up blood as the man kicked him in the chest, and Yin Wudao was so surprised and stated that after seeing the battle, he decided that he would just take it off. One of Yin Wudao's men was lying on the ground while the other was being grabbed by the man. The man glared ahead. Yin Wuda was terrified when he saw that, and he mentioned that the man's fame was so domineering, so he was afraid that in that application, he was out of luck. The man was the warrior king, Lin Feng, and after eliminating a lot of Yin Wudao's men, he continued to walk forward with a menacing glare on his face and demanded that the person surnamed Yin should get out of there. Yin Wudao suddenly came out of the room, and as he confidently asked which blind man dares to enter his house without permission, Lin Feng introduced himself and that he had come to look for his sister, Lin Yiru. Lin Feng was so enraged, and he warned that if Yin Wudao even touches a little of Lin Yiru, he will make sure he dies in layers. Yin Wudao looked down on Lin Feng and asked him if he was a brat and how he dared shout at him. Lin Feng dug his feet on the floor so powerfully that he broke it. Yin Wudao was startled when Lin Feng suddenly charged at him with his fist and threatened that he would beat him up. He gritted his teeth as he resolved that he would just give the Jialong infuriating Kai a try. Yin Wudao used the Jialong infuriating Kai and used his fist to block Lin Feng's fist. But he was pushed back, and his fist trembled. Yin Wudao looked so horrified, as he observed that Lin Feng's power was so domineering and that if he kept battling him, he was afraid that he would lose in one hit. Lin Feng suddenly grabbed Yin Wudao's neck and acknowledged that he didn't expect that he could endure his blow and that he was stronger than the other rich second generations. Lin Feng was about to deliver another punch, and he added that, however, Yin Wudao still couldn't touch his sister. Suddenly, Su Kinga arrived with Lin Yiru, who called her brother and urged that he should stop it because he misunderstood about Yin Wudao. The two ladies looked so horrified, and when Lin Feng saw Lin Yiru, he asked her what happened. Yin Wudao slapped Lin Feng's hand away and insulted that he was stupid. A few moments later, as the four of them gathered, Lin Yiru clarified that last night, she was bullied by bad people when Su Kingya helped her. So it has nothing to do with Yin Wudao as she just got out of bed with Su Kingya in one piece and was unharmed. But Lin Feng argued that it was a dupe because normal people should be sent to the hospital when faced with that kind of thing, not taken home. Su Kingya looked at Lin Feng with disdain and declared that she was a medical nurse, which surprised Lin Feng. Lin Feng was embarrassed, and he remarked that rich people should have some good stuff. Yin Wudao placed the glass he was holding, and he stated that the Lin family has no manners and that Lin Feng didn't know what happened. He explained that his grandfather was a founding hero, guarding the border with soldiers as well as horses while his father meticulously seized the land of that province, and his mother also paid tens of billions of taxes every year and questioned why the efforts of her three generations were slandered by Lin Feng. Lin Feng's expression turned grim when he heard those, while Su Kingya and Lin Yiru looked impressed. Lin Yiru approached Lin Feng and suggested that he should quickly apologize to Yin Wudao because he is not a bad person. Lin Feng looked troubled as he apologized to Yin Wudao and admitted that he was wrong. He quickly grabbed Lin Yiru, and while walking away, he looked so embarrassed as he mentioned that they didn't have to stay there for too long and bid goodbye, but Yin Wudao instructed that he should stop. Yin Wudao looked pissed, and he asked Lin Feng if he had given him permission to leave. Lin Feng got anxious, and he inquired of Yin Wudao if there was anything else. Yin Wudao pointed out that Lin Feng seriously injured four of his bodyguards and questioned him if he wanted to leave just like that, which horrified Lin Feng, and he assured that since he injured them, he would pay appropriate compensation. But Yin Wudao asked Lin Feng what he would pay with and commented that his sister was singing in bars to earn money so surely their family needed money. Lin Feng was horrified, and as he glanced at Lin Yiru, she revealed that she knew he was working very hard for their mom's sake, so she wanted to ease his burden. He gritted his teeth and clenched his first, and he disclosed that for 30 years, he was cheated and harassed as the poor. But Lin Feng was startled when Yin Wudao suddenly stopped him and proposed that they should not talk about tricking poor parents and taking on the role of people who work hard to be great because he had a suggestion that not only could he pay the compensation fee, he would also be given another million. Yin Wudao confidently handed a black card to Lin Feng and offered that he should be his bodyguard. Lin Feng was in a fiery rage, and he declared that when he left camp, 
he swore never to be a minion again, which horrified Lin Yuru, and she reminded that his oath couldn't buy food and their mom's surgery couldn't be postponed any longer. Both Su Kingya and Lin Yuru were taken aback when Lin Feng immediately changed demeanor, accepted the card, and decided that, however, he could see that Yin Wu Dao is a good person and he was willing to serve him. The system notified Yin Wu Dao that the survive mission was completed and his mission reward was Warrior King all attribute points, tactics, fighting, shooting, rock climbing, parachuting, driving, and formation, and the system indicated that since it detects that the follower's loyalty level is 20, it is temporarily impossible to get vanity points as they could only be obtained when the follower's loyalty exceeds 100. Suddenly, a burst of fiery aura emerged from Yin Wu Dao, and he proclaimed that the Nine Dragons True Kai combined with the Warrior King attribute was completely invincible. Yin Wu Dao grinned as he expressed that the rewards were great but he wondered if it was really hard to get vanity points. Lin Feng and Lin Yuru bowed in front of Yin Wu Dao as Lin Yuru thanked him and appreciated his help and promised that they would repay him in the future. Yin Wu Dao saw that Lin Feng's loyalty is 20 which is labeled as wondered and he acknowledged that Lin Feng's loyalty was quite good. He was surprised when, on the other hand, he observed that Lin Yuru's favorability level was 60, which was labeled as amazed, and he wondered what happened to her favorability level. The system suddenly released a new quest, which was a side quest to get Lin Yuru as a girl with a reward of one vanity point and treasure talent, and the requirement was to have her favorability level reach 95. Yin Wu Dao smiled brightly at Lin Yuru, and he remarked that she was an innocent little girl. A few moments later, Su Kingya and Yin Wu Dao were sending Lin Feng and Lin Yuru off, and as Su Kingya wished that they should be careful on the way, Yin Wu Dao invited that Lin Yuru should come and play often. Yin Wu Dao grabbed Su Kingya and thanked her for helping her earlier, because otherwise, Lin Feng would have definitely beaten him up. But Su Kingya slapped Yin Wu Dao's hand away. Su Kingya's favorability level dropped to 80, which was still labeled as love, and she mentioned that it was the last one because she does know Yin Wu Dao, so even if it was bad, he has to fix it. Yin Wu Dao was surprised when Su Kingya walked away, and he wondered why her favorability level was at 80 and if her love had decreased. He looked so defeated, as he muttered that Su Kingya really misunderstood. The next day, Lin Yuru was scolding Lin Feng and reprimanded that he should have just slipped away because, after sending their mother to the hospital, he had to go to work at Yin Yu Dao's house and he shouldn't be late on the first day. They were with their mother Lin, and Lin Feng looked annoyed as he complained that Lin Yuru has been talking about Yin Wu Dao since returning from there, so he thinks she has been charmed by that man, and he warned not to go near him because he has a bad reputation. But Lin Yuru insisted that those were all rumors from the outside world as Yin Wu Dao is not bad. Suddenly, the bucket of abaco hit a wall. It was the wall to the Lin residence, and they were surprised when their wall was smashed in front of them. A man named Sang Bao stood on top of the rubble and declared that the people inside should listen up because the demolition deadline has come, and if they don't move, their whole family will be razed to the ground. Mother Lin was worried as Lin Feng exclaimed that he was there at that time, so he would see who dares to tear it down, and Lin Yuru explained that they also don't want to sell the house because the purchase price is lower than usual. Sang Bao scoffed and asked them if he cared and if they thought he was scared. Lin Feng and Lin Yuru were alarmed when Mother Lin quickly stepped forward and apologized to Sang Bao. She explained that those kids were a little stupid, so he shouldn't pay attention to them because they agreed to tear it down and they would move soon. But Sang Bao kicked Mother Lin and cursed that it was really damn bad luck. Lin Feng was filled with rage, and tears welled up at the corners of his eyes when he saw what just happened. Lin Feng looked so enraged, and as he questioned Sang Bao for daring to hit his mother, he exclaimed that he was courting death. But Sang Bao retorted that he would see how he makes him move because he could have him taken to jail and let him sit there. Sang Bao pointed behind Lin Feng and indicated that it was the same as for his mother and sister. Lin Feng was troubled, and he insisted that he had to be patient as he should not go to jail at that moment because if he went to jail, no one would protect his mother and sister. But Sang Bao continued to taunt him, and while slapping his cheeks, he provoked that Lin Feng should come and hit there. But Sang Bao was startled when he really got punched in the face. It was Yin Wu Dao who punched him, and even Lin Feng was surprised. Fixing his hair, Yin Wu Dao stated that he couldn't stand seeing Lin Yuru struggling like that. Yin Wu Dao proudly stood there with a grin on his face, while Sang Bao was trembling in pain beneath his feet. Lin Yuru was in awe, and she looked so happy when she saw Yin Wu Dao. On the other hand, Lin Feng looked horrified as he asked Yin Wu Dao why he was there, and Yin Wu Dao explained that it was because he worked for him, so he was visiting his house. Sang Bao came back to his senses, and as he stood back up, he was enraged and demanded who dared to fight against him. But Sang Bao got terrified when he recognized Yin Wu Dao, who was glaring at him. Sang Bao's demeanor completely changed. 
He meekly acknowledged that it turned out that it was Yin Wudao, and as he asked him if there was anything good that he came there personally and if he remembered him, he revealed that he is a member of the Jiang family and he has cleaned his shoes before. Lin Feng was alarmed when he heard that Sang Bao was a Jiang family member because it was one of the four families. Picking up the wrench on the floor, Yin Wudao smiled and remarked that apparently Sang Bao is from the Jiang Renji family, so it was no wonder he looked familiar. And as he asked if it was his wrench, Sang Bao confirmed that it was right and that those were all their people who came to evict that house. Lin Yuru looked disappointed, and as she asked why Yin Wudao was befriending Sang Bao, Lin Feng reiterated that they were the same people. But Yin Wudao suddenly smacked Sang Bao with the wrench when he heard that it was their people, and he accused that he was a beast that even dared to hit mothers. Sang Bao coughed up blood, and as he lay on the ground, he questioned that Yin Wudao dared to hit him even though he already knew who he was, so he asked if he was trying to declare war on the Jiang family. While wiping his hand, Yin Wudao smugly inquired if he really thought he cared. Lin Yuru's eyes twinkled, and she looked so amazed as she remarked that Yin Wudao was different, while Lin Feng smirked, and he commented that even though Yin Wudao is arrogant and domineering, he's really helpful and really cunning. Yin Wudao saw that Lin Yuru's favorability level was at 70, which is amazed, while Lin Feng's loyalty level was at 50, which is respect, and he let out a sigh as he noted that the best way to win people's hearts is to look cool in front of them. Even if it seems a bit pushy, Sang Bao suddenly pulled out his phone and announced that since Yin Wudao wanted to do it that way, he would do it, and he could only ask the Jiang family for help. Lin Yuru got worried, and she wondered if that would cause much trouble for Yin Wudao. A few moments later, a car arrived, and it made an abrupt stop. Luo Fengyi, the illegitimate son of the Jiang family, arrived, and as he remarked that Yin Wudao came to his Jiang family's construction site instead of going to the club, he asked him if he was not afraid that his shoes would be dirty. But Luo Fengyi was startled when Yin Wudao retorted that it turns out to be the illegitimate child that the Jiang family recognized not too long ago, and asked him if he came out there to do business and if there really wasn't anyone else in their Jiang family that they even sent an illegitimate child. Yin Wudao was taken aback when Luo Fengyi charged at him, and as Luo Fengyi questioned Yin Wudao for daring to mock, he observed that Yin Wudao was so bold and wondered if he was not afraid of angering the Jiang family. Yin Wudao managed to dodge Luo Fengyi's attack, and Luo Fengyi was surprised that he was so fast, and that he could dodge his attacks. Suddenly, Lin Feng jumped in, and he declared that with him there, Luo Fengyi couldn't hurt Yin Wudao. Luo Fengyi and Lin Feng's fists clashed with each other. Lin Feng's fist was so strong that Luo Fengyi was pushed back by the impact. While Lin Feng was glaring intently at him, Luo Fengyi was on edge, as he noted that Lin Feng was quite powerful and that he didn't expect that there would be a master like him in Jiang. Luo Fengyi admitted that if he couldn't win in terms of strength, he had to make use of his movement skills, and he charged forward. He was lunging at Lin Feng at such incredible speed that it looked like he had multiplied. Lin Feng was taken aback, and he recognized that it was ghost movement, so he couldn't tell the real body with the naked eye. He closed his eyes to concentrate. Suddenly, Luo Fengyi jumped off the floor, and as he was about to attack Lin Feng from behind, he declared that Lin Feng had made a mistake. Luo Fengyi managed to hit Lin Feng on the shoulder, and during the pain of the punch, Lin Feng remarked that Luo Fengyi was very fast. But Lin Feng suddenly raised his leg. Lin Feng gave Luo Fengyi an axe kick and commented that he was still lacking. Luo Fengyi quickly stepped away from Lin Feng and put some distance between them. Yin Wudao, who was watching the fight, was concerned, and he noted that Luo Fengyi was actually on par with Lin Feng, so he was afraid that he was not an ordinary person. He was surprised when the system notified him that a new mission had been detected. The mission was to defeat the Shira, Luo Fengyi, with the reward of one vanity point and 36 flying blood blade lotus, and as he looked at the mission details, he realized that Luo Fengyi was a killer. Yin Wudao mentioned that Luo Fengyi must have used his ghost movement technique in conjunction with his flying knife technique, and as he thought of the 36 knives, he wondered if Lin Feng could stop them, and he grinned as he speculated that Lin Feng would and it would be his as he's the master. While Luo Fengyi and Lin Feng were busy fighting, Yin Wudao was alarmed when he noticed that Sang Bao was charging at them from behind. Yin Wudao cursed in his mind as he muttered that the dog should have served as a distraction for Lin Feng. But luckily, because of the Jiolong infuriating Kai transformation, the sixth sense of his body has been strengthened and has become more sensitive. He grinned sinisterly as he looked over his shoulder, and he observed that it was a good thing. Sang Bao was about to attack Lin Yuru with the wrench, and as he questioned them for daring to disobey the Jiang family, he declared that they would all be destroyed. Yin Wudao yelled and warned that Lin Yuru should watch out, and the wrench hit something. Yin Wudao protected Lin Yuru with his body, so he was the one who got hit instead, and Sang Bao was horrified when he saw what happened. Tears welled up at the corners of Lin Yuru's eyes as she exclaimed that Yin Wudao had even gotten hurt while trying to save her. 
Lin Feng got worried, and he asked Yin Wudao if he was okay, while Luo Feng Yi noted that it has been a long time since he fought seriously, so Lin Feng should focus on the fight. Yin Wudao removed his coat, and after he gave it to Lin Yiru, he rolled up his sleeves and assured that it was no problem, so Lin Feng should just leave it to him. Sang Bao charged at Yin Wudao, and as he apologized to him, he explained that since Luo Feng Yi started it first, he would punish him for being reckless. But Sang Bao's face was greeted with a fist. It was Yin Wudao's fist, and as he sent Sang Bao flying, he complained that he was so noisy while Lin Yiru admired him and praised that he was very strong. As he kicked Sang Bao, Yin Wudao commented that it was worthy of being called the Warrior King attribute because, even though he's not proficient, the plane's strength alone was strong enough. While Sang Bao lay unconscious on the floor, Lin Yiru asked Yin Wudao if he got hurt earlier, and as Yin Wudao thanked her for her concern, he assured that he's fine. Lin Yiru suggested that Yin Wudao should just call her Yiru and that it was all their fault that he got hurt, so she was really sorry. And Yin Wudao replied that, of course, it was how a hero saves a beautiful woman with few injuries, a perfect, brilliant strategy. Yin Wudao insisted that there was no need to apologize because even though he was not their family, he would still help people in need. He declared that Sang Bao was like a pig and a dog for bullying an orphan and a widow. While Lin Yiru's mother was worried and urged that Lin Feng should stop fighting and not fight anymore, Lin Yiru was busy admiring Yin Wudao, who condemned that the Jiang family were a cowardly robber, a tycoon monopolizing real estate who loves to blackmail the residents of that town and are like vampires, so there was no way he could sit idly by and ignore them. Lin Yiru's favorability level increased to 80, which is liked, and as she admired that Yin Wudao was very handsome. She wondered how there could be such a handsome and kind-hearted man in that world while she completely forgot that her brother was also in a fight. Yin Wudao noticed that Lin Feng and Luo Feng Yi were still fighting, and he feared that the fight would continue until one of them died. Suddenly, another car arrived, and it also stopped abruptly. It was Zhang Renji, and as soon as he got out of his car, he immediately commanded that Luo Feng Yi should stop because they are his acquaintances. A few moments later, Zhang Renji and Yin Wudao were sitting at an empty table across from each other, with Lin Yuru and Luo Feng Yi behind them. Jiang Renji immediately asked Yin Wudao if Lin Yiru was the girl they saw at the nightclub the other night, and Yin Wudao confirmed that it was right. Jiang Renji smiled brightly while pulling out a paper from his pocket, and he mentioned that he heard that his people did not know that Yin Wudao had a relationship with Lin Yiru, so they acted recklessly. What Jiang Renji pulled out was a check note, and as he placed it on the table, he explained that it was a check for 10 million, and half of it would be for the resettlement while the other half would be compensation, and he asked Yin Wudao what he thought. Yin Wudao turned to Lin Yiru with a smile, and he suggested that she could have sent her mother to the hospital so she would be in charge of the matter, which startled Lin Yiru, and Yin Wudao advised that she could accept it or reject it. Lin Yiru asked Zhang Renji if he was just compensating her or everyone in that old town, and Zhang Renji clarified that of course it was only for her because there are so many old houses, and if all of them asked for compensation, it would cost billions. Zhang Renji was surprised when Lin Yiru apologized and firmly refused that she couldn't take it. Jiang Renji was pissed, and as he called Lin Yiru a little girl, he warned that she shouldn't underestimate his good intentions because his sister explained that the funds used to buy settlements were not lower than the market price, so she shouldn't destroy them, and he asked her how much she wanted and she should just tell him. But Lin Yiru was stubborn, and she insisted that she didn't want to. Yin Wudao immediately chimed in, and he declared that the discussion ended there. He flipped the table and commanded that if Jiang Renji doesn't agree, he shouldn't talk about it anymore and get out of there, which startled Jiang Renji. Jiang Renji was pissed, and he asked Yin Wudao if he wanted to turn against him just for a woman, and he even wanted to fight his Jiang family. Yin Wudao confidently confirmed that Jiang Renji was right. Jiang Renji threatened that Yin Wudao shouldn't blame him for being reckless. Jiang Renji was enraged, and he asked Lin Yiru if she claimed that Yin Wudao just suddenly met her and acted romantic. He stated that Yin Wudao saw her at the nightclub and asked him to send her to his bed, and that startled both Lin Yiru and Yin Wudao. Yin Wudao was horrified, and he exclaimed that Jiang Renji was a bastard because wounds from heartache hurt even more than being hit so many times, so he could not let him. Jiang Renji quickly walked away, leaving Yin Wudao and Lin Yiru. Lin Yiru immediately asked Yin Wudao if that was true, and he was terrified. Tears flowed out of Lin Yuru's eyes as she questioned Yin Wudao if what Jiang Renji asserted was true. Yin Wudao was troubled as he confessed that he's sure that Lin Yuru would slap him. However, as long as he didn't run, he could make her fall in love with him in 10 seconds. Lin Yuru was startled when Yin Wudao admitted that it was correct. She immediately slapped Yin Wudao and accused him of being shameless. After he got slapped, Yin Wudao remarked that it was time. Yin Wudao mentioned that Lin Yuru's had peerless beauty 
and when he saw her that day, his soul never returned to his body. He regretted that he shouldn't have been in that nightclub, and they shouldn't have met. Lin Yu was moved when Yin Wudao revealed that he would have no trouble sleeping at night. He wouldn't be involved in demolition. He wouldn't be hurt again, and he wouldn't have to cut off his ties with his friends for more than 10 years. Yin Wudao looked so dejected as he declared that if loving someone meant shamelessness, he is the one who has no shame, and that startled Lin Yuru. Yin Wudao placed his hand on his chest, like he was in pain. Suddenly, someone grabbed his other hand. It was Lin Yuru, and as she apologized, her favorability level increased to 90, which is love. Yin Wudao covered the evil grin on his face with his hand, as he proclaimed that the mission was a success. Lin Yuru suddenly turned away when someone arrived and asked if the Jiang family was gone. It was Lin Feng, and Lin Yuru immediately ran away while she remarked that they should chat as she had something to do at school. So she was going first, and when Lin Feng saw her, he called her a crazy girl and remarked that she was embarrassed to the point of being so red. Yin Wu Dao was intrigued, so he inquired if Lin Yuru was still in school, and Lin Feng informed him that she is majoring in cultural heritage identification at Zhongcheng University, so she should be busy with her recent internship activities. Yin Wu Dao asked Lin Feng if his mother was alright, and as Lin Feng thanked him, he assured that everything was safe. He asked Lin Feng what he thought about what happened that day, and Lin Feng suggested that there must be something weird about it. Yin Wudao commented that Liu Fengyi was a very cunning person, so he couldn't understand how he could be so reckless in the midst of such a fierce battle. Lin Feng agreed and added that Liu Fengyi's thinking is full of secrets because he doesn't even look down on him when he attacks the boss, so he feels like Liu Fengyi is trying to fight for the Wai family. Yin Wudao acknowledged that it was right and that it was the reason why he cut ties with the Jiang family because if Liu Fengyi is good enough, surely the idiot Jiang Renji won't be able to fight him. And he thinks that there will be chaos within the Jiang family, so they should put the current relationship aside and wait and see what happens. Lin Feng's loyalty level increased to 60, which is amazed, and as he called Yin Wudao his boss, he praised him for being really wise. Yin Wudao asked Lin Feng if there was any chance of winning if he fought Liu Fengyi to the death, and Lin Feng estimated that if bare hand they may be equal. However, he could see that his fingers are covered in callus, so he's afraid that Liu Feng is a master of weapons, but he doesn't know what weapon he's using. Yin Wudao revealed that Liu Feng uses a dagger, and Lin Feng's loyalty level increased to 70, which is still a maze, as he complimented Yin Wudao for being really a genius because indeed, the ghost movement technique matches that type of weapon. Lin Feng noted that if Liu Feng uses a throwing dagger, he could only fight him with a gun, so Yin Wudao advised that he should use a gun. But Lin Feng expressed that the firearm's license is very strict, so he doesn't know how he could possibly have a gun. Yin Wudao assured that Lin Feng shouldn't have to worry about that because he will take care of it. A few moments later, the city looked so tranquil, and the water flowing under the bridge looked so clear. Two guys were peeing on the water, and one of them recalled that they used to do that when they were kids, and at that time, his shot was three feet away. It was Sang Bao, and he was talking with Liu Fengyi, who reminded him that he had made him stay at Wai's house for years and had been giving him a lot of trouble, to which Sang Bao replied and acknowledged that Liu Fengyi saved his life once, so he would do anything for him, and he asked him if he was sure that he wanted to do something towards the Jiang family. Liu Fengyi's face turned dark as he explained that at that time, his mother was not recognized but was also tortured to death because of her identity as a dancer, and since he's back, he wanted to make the Jiang family pay that blood debt. He commented that Zhang Renji is a fool with pig brains because he didn't even investigate the market and the old city renovation project. Otherwise, surely it was already in his hands, and in a few days, it will be the old man's birthday banquet, so he will wait for him to come out. But with the arrogant Yin Wudao, whom he heard that even the dragon king Xiao Chen lost at his hands, it looked like they had to be careful with it. Calling Luo Fengyi a young master, Sang Bao advised that he shouldn't worry because he will try to avoid it in the future. Luo Fengyi remembered and asked Sang Bao if he had found the person he was looking for, to which Sang Bao replied and promised that he would search and find them. Looking at a picture, Luo Fengyi wondered where they went because, for so many years, he trained abroad, and it was because of them that he could survive that long, so at that time, he would not let go of their hand. Luo Fengyi was looking at Su Kingya's picture. On the other hand, Su Kingya was kneeling on the floor as she prepared Yin Wudao's slippers, and as she asked if he was already back, she instructed that he should change his shoes first. Su Kingya helped Yin Wudao remove his coat, and she informed that that day, the Jiang family sent information saying that it would be Zhang Lian Cheng's, the head of the Jiang family, 60th birthday in a few days, and he was invited there, to which Yin Wudao responded okay and that Su Kingya should come with him when the time comes. Yin Wudao remembered something, and he disclosed that in about half a month, the contract between them will end and Su Kingya will be free because, back then, her father owed him a request to be his contract girlfriend for three years, and he is very grateful to her for taking 
taken care of him all those times, so he will release her according to his promise, which surprised Su Kingya. Su Kingya was so surprised that she dropped Yin Wudao's coat on the floor. Yin Wudao was surprised when he turned and saw that Su Kingya was crying, while she lamented that that would be in 14 days, 8 hours, and 42 minutes. It was Zhang Liancheng's birthday, and the room was filled with people who were dressed fancy. Yin Wudao and Su Kingya entered the room, and as Yin Wudao greeted everyone good morning, the others greeted Su Kingya and addressed her as Miss Wudao. And while some of them asked Yin Wudao if they brought her to play, some of them mentioned that she was so beautiful. Su Kingya looked so self-conscious as she mentioned that she couldn't believe that they were just talking. Yin Wudao asked Su Kingya if she didn't like it, and she bashfully replied that she didn't. Su Kingya asked herself what she just mentioned, and she said that she would be leaving Yin Wudao soon, so she shouldn't be happy to be called a young madam. Suddenly, someone approached them and asked if young Master Yin came there too. It was Jiang Renji with Jiang Ruozu clutching his arms, and as he stated that he had heard that Yin Wudao had robbed the Jiang group using dissension, he questioned him if that wasn't too arrogant. He mentioned that Yin Wudao's wishful thinking will fail because he will officially inherit the Zhang family at that day's banquet. So in the future, he will take over Zhang Xi and Ryuxu, so he shouldn't blame him for being rude to him if he dared to touch them again. Jiang Ruozu chimed in, and she remarked that it was right because, without Yin Wudao, the group could still counterattack, so he would never succeed with his wolf ambition. But Yin Wudao just calmly walked past them as he asked them if it was real, and he stated that he was not going to discuss how long it would take until they kneeled to him later. Zhang Renji was pissed, and he exclaimed that it was bullshit because he would never get down on his knees, asking for Yin Wudao's help even if he died there. While Jiang Ruozu called Yin Wudao a bastard and remarked that she would never bow her head in front of him. A few moments later, a gong was struck, and its ringing sound filled the room. A man hit it and called for the audience's attention. Zhang Liancheng was up on stage in a wheelchair, and as he thanked everyone for coming to his birthday banquet, he announced that he is very old and his health is also deteriorating, so he invited everyone to come there today because he hopes that all of them could help him bear witness. Pointing at where Zhang Renji, the first son, and Luo Fengyi, the illegitimate child, were standing, Zhang Liancheng revealed that he decided to pass his position as the head of the Zhang family to his son, and Zhang Renji was already celebrating. But Jiang Liancheng declared that Luo Fengyi was the new head of the Jiang family. Jiang Renji was extremely surprised by what he heard. Jiang Ruozu was also surprised, and as she questioned if it wasn't Jiang Renji, a man asked how Jiang Liancheng could pass the position of head of the family to an illegitimate child. And a woman remarked that in fact, even if Jiang Renji is an outrageous person, he won't lose his position as successor. Jiang Renji was enraged, and while Jiang Liancheng was coughing, he exclaimed that not only did he lose his legs, but he also lost his brain, and he asked him if he was aware of his words and if he was crazy because he was giving the title of head of the family to an illegitimate child. He called Zhang Liancheng an old man and demanded that he should answer him. But Zhang Renji was sent flying when Luo Fengyi hit him. Luo Fengyi remarked that it was their father's birthday banquet, so he should rest. On the other hand, Yin Wudao grinned as he mentioned that Zhang Renji was an idiot, while Su Kingya was speechless beside him. Su Kingya looked so worried when she recognized Luo Fengyi, and as she asked if he was back, Yi Wudao was surprised, and he immediately stated that there was something wrong. The system notified Yi Wudao that he has a side quest to tease Su Kingya, the beautiful girl from the sky. The quest will be completed when her favorability level reaches 98, where Yin Wudao will be rewarded with one vanity point and modern medical talent. And when Yi Wudao saw that, he remarked that it turns out that the girl that Luo Fengyi likes is Su Kingya. Suddenly, a green hat landed on Yin Wudao's hand, and he looked so puzzled as he asked whose hat it was. While Luo Fengyi was beating up Zhang Renji, Aunt Zhu, Zhang Renji's mother, ran towards them, and as she called Luo Fengyi a little bastard, she demanded that he should release her son. But Luo Fengyi pushed her and ordered that she should get out of the way while calling her witch. The guests were surprised, and as one of them questioned if it wasn't too arrogant, another guest questioned how Jiang Liancheng could give the position of head of the family to that rude bastard. Meanwhile, Yin Wudao was just watching quietly, and as Luo Fengyi clapped his hand and stated that they should bring the person there, Yin Wudao remarked that, as expected, Luo Fengyi had quite a few tactics. Someone entered the room, and another person commanded that they should get on their knees. Sang Bao came in with the servant, Jiang Rui, and when the guests recognized that he was the housekeeper of the Yin family, they questioned why he was tied up, and another guest remarked that they apparently came there to see the drama. Luo Fengyi revealed that he already knew that the reason why her mother died suddenly was because of of Zhang Rui's poison. And while pointing at Aunt Zhu and Zhang Rui, he stated that they cruelly poisoned his mother because his mother knew something, namely their affair. Aunt Zhu and Zhang Rui were both surprised and horrified when they heard what Liu Fengyi said. 
Luo Fengyi pointed at Zhang Renji as he revealed that Zhang Renji is by no means the eldest son of the Zhang family but a descendant of Aunt Zhu and the servant of the Zhang family, and the guests remarked that it was a shocking scandal. Yin Wudao was disgusted when he heard that, and he remarked that it turns out that there is still such a scandal in the Zhang family, and with that, he really realized something. Zhang Renji retaliated and stated that Luo Fengyi was just bragging because he is the eldest child. But when Luo Fengyi heard what Zhang Renji said, he confidently threw a paper at him and demanded that he should just take a look at that DNA test. Zhang Renji's eyes were wide in surprise when he saw that the test confirmed that he was not related by blood. He was astonished and felt like he was struck by lightning when he saw the results, and he couldn't help but ask how it happened. Meanwhile, Aunt Zhu and Zhang Rui were frozen in shock and were speechless. On the other hand, Zhang Ruo Zhu looked terrified as she remarked that it was over, even though she just got a supporter because everything was exactly the same. Just as Yin Wudao expected, Zhang Liancheng declared that from that point onward, the surname Zhang, which is in Zhang Renji's name, will be taken back, and they should drag Zhang Rui and Chen Zhu, Aunt Zhu's real name, out as he will divorce and kick them out of the house. As security took Chen Zhu and Zhang Rui, Zhang Renji ran towards Zhang Liancheng and pleaded that he shouldn't do that because he was raised by him, so he should let him stay. But Luo Fengyi stood in front of Zhang Renji, and with a menacing look on his face, he asked Zhang Renji if he wanted to get out of there on his own or if he would kick him out of there. Zhang Renji looked around and requested that anyone save him, but one of the guests advised that he shouldn't look at him because he doesn't dare to meddle in the affairs of the Zhang family, and another remarked that not even the Divine King could save Zhang Renji in that matter. Zhang Renji was so horrified, but he saw Yin Wudao, who expressed his annoyance and inquired what he wanted. Zhang Renji quickly kneeled and bowed in front of Yin Wudao and begged that he should help him, as only he could save him and he didn't want to die. Yin Wudao was amused, and he playfully reminded Zhang Renji if he remembered who claimed before that they wouldn't beg him even if they died. Both Zhang Ruozu and Zhang Renji were horrified when they heard what Yin Wudao declared. Zhang Renji immediately bowed aggressively while he admitted that he was wrong and had been presumptuous before, and he requested that Yin Wudao forgive him. Tears welled up in Zhang Renji's eyes, and he promised that if Yin Wudao could help him that day, the old town renovation project would be his. Yin Wudao walked past Zhang Renji and remarked that he shouldn't forget that Zhang Cheng Central Hospital will also be his, which horrified Zhang Renji, and he accused Yin Wudao of being too greedy. Yin Wudao glared at Zhang Renji and asked him to confirm if he had no other choice. Zhang Renji trembled, and after pausing for a moment to think about it, he acknowledged that Yin Wudao was right. Yin Wudao clapped his hand while he approached Luo Fengyi who was startled, and he exclaimed that it was really amazing. Luo Fengyi glared at Yin Wudao and reminded him that he is from the Yin family, so he advised him not to interfere in that matter. But Yin Wudao smiled smugly and stated that the Yin family and Zhang family are good friends, so seeing that the Zhang family is in danger, there was no way he could sit quietly and ignore it. Luo Fengyi gritted his teeth and urged that Yin Wudao should think clearly because adults must take responsibility for their own words and actions. Yin Wudao calmly agreed, saying that he understood but someone suddenly raised an assessment certificate. It was Yin Wudao, and Luo Fengyi was astonished when Yin Wudao questioned him why that identification was fake. Luo Fengyi confidently insisted that it was the real evidence identified by Jiangda Identification University, and he is the most authoritative person in the entire Jiangcheng. Yin Wudao asked Luo Fengyi if it was real and challenged that they should prove it on the spot. He pointed at Director Dong, who was taken aback, and asked him to tell everyone if that certificate was correct. Dong Hao, Dean of Jiangda Identification University, was apprehensive, and as he wondered if Yin Wudao was crazy and if there was something wrong with his brain, he muttered that Yin Wudao was too stupid to interfere. Yin Wudao approached Dong Hao, and with a bright smile on his face, he mentioned that Ling Dong Fei seemed to be working in his family, in the Shengteng group, which startled Dong Hao and made him ask Yin Wudao what he wanted to do. Dong Hao was terrified when Yin Wudao leaned towards him and assured him that he shouldn't worry as he would take good care of it, and Dong Hao immediately agreed. Dong Hao announced that the certificate was fake as their Jiangda Identification University never issued that assessment. And when the other guests heard that, one of them inquired what happened, and another concluded that it turned out that it was fake. Yin Wudao ripped the assessment certificate, and when Luo Fengyi saw that, he remarked that Yin Wudao is from the Yin family, and as he inquired why he tore the identification certificate, he explained that Zhang Rui has explained everything, so that's another judgment. But Yin Wudao questioned Luo Fengyi what Zhang Rui declared because he didn't hear anything. Sang Bao threatened Zhang Rui and urged that he should honestly reveal what he confessed yesterday, to which Zhang Rui implored that he should stop, and while requesting that they forgive him, he admitted that he and Chen Zhu dated 20 years ago. 
Yin Wudok called Zhang Rui a bastard, and as he asserted that Chen Zhu is the direct daughter of the Chen clan in Yingchuan and she has a high status, he questioned Zhang Rui if he really claimed that Chen Zhu was willing to give up her status just to go on a date with him. He declared that Zhang Rui has been a servant in the Zhang family for several years and is well-liked, yet he dared to slander Chen Zhu and frame Zhang Renji, and such acts of infidelity and injustice are simply not worthy of being human. Yin Wudao remarked that the pain of flesh and blood is only temporary, but loyalty and truth will last forever in that world, and that is what a man does. But it has an expert translation that says that Zhang Rui could die only once, but if he could save his woman and children, that is what he must do. Zhang Rui was alarmed and horrified when he understood what Yin Wudao declared. He confessed that it was Liu Fengyi who forced him to frame Chen Zhu and Zhang Renji, but he and Chen Zhu have never crossed the line, so he has nothing to do with Zhang Renji as he is very loyal to the Zhang family. And Liu Fengyi was so surprised when he heard what Zhang Rui confessed that he called him an old bastard, and denied that he declared such a thing yesterday. Zhang Rui ran and screamed that he didn't mind if he had to die. He slammed his head into the pillar, and after the cracking sound resounded through the entire room, Jiang Rui lay on the floor in his own pool of blood, and everyone was astonished. Luo Fengyi stated that Yin Wudao could actually turn something black into white with just a few words and even made Jiang Rui turn like that. So in a few moments, the plans that he had been working hard for years had failed. Looking at Yin Wudao's smug smile, Luo Fengyi remarked that, as expected from the one who killed the Dragon King, he was amazing. Zhang Liancheng was startled when Yin Wudao mentioned that Luo Fengyi wanted to try to take the inheritance and frame Chen Zhu, so he would let the Zhang family take care of him and he wouldn't interfere anymore, while Luo Fengyi was fuming mad as he exclaimed that Yin Wudao was a bastard and he had to be prepared for the consequences. Zhang Liancheng immediately suggested that they should quickly beat Liu Fengyi with a stick as he doesn't have a son like him, and the security men immediately charged with sticks in their hands. But Liu Fengyi easily lunged at those security men and eliminated them with his fists. He quickly went and grabbed Chen Zhu by her neck. Luo Fengyi looked so enraged as he raised Chen Zhu in the air, and he proclaimed that he doesn't care about the Jiang Mu family scandal anymore, and he also doesn't care about the position of the head of the Jiang Yang family because it is crap, and he will only do one thing when he comes back. He declared that it was revenge. Luo Fengyi broke Chen Zhu's neck, and as blood spurted out of her mouth, Jiang Renji cried and shouted no. The other guests observed that it was really brutal, and Yin Wudao apologized. Meanwhile, Jiang Liancheng got a heart attack after he witnessed what just happened. He quickly died, and Zhang Renji cried again as he called him his daddy and pleaded that he shouldn't die. Luo Fengyi walked past Zhang Liancheng, and as he questioned him if he was scared to death, he called him an idiot. He went to Yin Wudao and announced that it was his turn next because he killed an eyewitness and destroyed his plans against the Zhang family. But Yin Wudao taunted him by asking if he did such a thing on the basis of revenge and remarked that he was only interested in the hundreds of billions of Zhang family assets, and called him hypocritical. Luo Fengyi charged towards Yin Wudao and declared that people who are about to die don't need to talk too much, and he will make Yin Wudao a stepping stone for him. But Luo Fengyi was astonished when Su Qingya suddenly stood in front of Yin Wudao and urged that he shouldn't kill him, and he couldn't help but ask Su Qingya to confirm if it was her. Suddenly, Sang Bao came running towards Luo Fengyi and announced that Lu Man from the Red Shield Defense Officer had arrived, and Luo Fengyi remarked that they came pretty fast. The two of them quickly ran towards the window to jump out of it, but Yin Wudao was startled when, before jumping out, Luo Fengyi declared that he would visit them again. Yin Wudao glanced at Su Qingya's worried face, and he observed that it seemed that they both knew each other. Jiang Renji suddenly came charging with a butcher knife, and while calling Luo Fengyi a bastard, he shouted that they shouldn't go because he would kill them, but Yin Wudao mentioned that they had run away. Jiang Renji suddenly slumped on the floor, completely dejected, and he lamented that all his family died and he became an orphan. But Yin Wudao stated that it was not the time to be sad because the Jiang family is not allowed, so he will send someone to help him with the funeral, and he must take over the Jiang family's inheritance as soon as possible. As he asked if it was real, Jiang Renji quickly went to hug Yin Wudao and remarked that he was really good. But Yin Wudao pushed him away and warned that he should let him go or he would kill him. Calling Zhang Renji silly, Yin Wudao reminded that they had been friends since childhood, so of course he saved him so he didn't die, and with a bright smile on his face, Zhang Renji acknowledged that it was right and called Yin Wudao his brother. But Zhang Renji was speechless when Yin Wudao tapped him on the shoulder and urged that he should remember to commission the old town renovation project and the central hospital on his behalf as soon as possible. He even repeatedly reminded that Zhang Renji should remember. Zhang Renji turned to Zhang Ruo Zhu and declared that she has seen what happened that day and he can't offend Yin Wudao for her. So their previous agreement doesn't apply and she can find someone else, which Zhang Ruo Zhu acknowledged she understood. 
Jiang Renji leaned in to whisper at Jiang Ruozu and suggested that she should follow Yin Wudao because in Jiang Cheng, no one could go against him, and he always gets what he wants. He let out a sigh and remarked that it just so happened that Jiang Ruozu was the woman he wanted, and tears flowed down Jiang Ruozu's cheeks as she tried to protest but couldn't finish it. Jiang Ruozu turned to Yin Wudao and asked him if it wouldn't hurt his conscience if he twisted the facts and turned black into white. Yin Wudao smirked as he questioned Jiang Ruozu about turning black and white. He asked Jiang Ruozu if she believed that everyone there is blind and if Jiang Liancheng doesn't know the truth and reminded that the Chen clan in Yingchuan is so big that if the Jiang family easily divorces Chen Zhu and wipes out Jiang Renji, the Chen clan will not stand still, and Jiang Liancheng couldn't provoke a tiger, so to maintain his face, he had to endure the shame of changing his air, and what he just did was give Jiang Liancheng a chance. Both Jiang Ruozu and Su Qingya were astonished by what they heard. Jiang Ruozu exclaimed that it was impossible because Jiang Liancheng will never neglect the Jiang family's lineage for self-protection. But Yin Wudao clarified that Jiang Renji was the second son of the Jiang family's eighth elder, and he had the same blood as Jiang Liancheng, so Jiang Renji and Liu Fengyi both carry the Jiang family's blood. Yin Wudao questioned Jiang Ruozu if he would choose Jiang Renji, who had a strong backing, or Liu Fengyi, who was born to an ordinary mother if he was Jiang Liancheng. Jiang Ruozu was so startled at the realization that she couldn't utter a word. But her favorability level kept rising until it reached minus 20, which is still hate. Even though it was hard to admit, Jiang Ruozu confessed that she would choose Jiang Renji, and she wondered how Yin Wudao knew so much. As Yin Wudao walked out the door with Su Qingya, Jiang Ruozu looked at him and declared that he was truly a monster. At Yin Wudao's residence, he mentioned that Su Qingya should go up first as he wanted to talk about something with Lin Feng, and Su Qingya was a bit disappointed by that. Noticing Su Qingya's reaction, Lin Feng asked Yin Wudao what happened to her and if she was scared because he was a little curious along the way, and Yin Wudao explained that it was just a normal woman. Meanwhile, Su Qingya looked so dejected as she walked up the stairs. Yin Wudao opened the trunk of his car, where a huge case was lying, and revealed that he had something he needed to show Lin Feng. When the case was opened, it revealed a gun, which Lin Feng immediately recognized as Desert Eagles, and as he asked Yin Wudao how he got it, Yin Wudao informed that smart people have their own way. Lin Feng looked so excited as he grabbed the gun, and he expressed that the familiar touch made him feel like returning to the military camp. But he let go of the gun and admitted that unfortunately, he doesn't have a gun license, so he doesn't have a gun to use his gunship. Yin Wudao proudly showed the gun license to Lin Feng, who was surprised and remarked that there were two. Yin Wudao stated that he informed that he was afraid of being bullied and noted about it, which baffled Lin Feng, who asked him who dared to bully him. Suddenly, the two of them were startled when they heard that Su Qingya shouted no loudly. Yin Wudao immediately turned to look at where the voice was coming from, and he worriedly called Su Qingya's name. On the other hand, Lin Feng quickly grabbed the gun and jumped in the direction where the voice was coming from. Lin Feng landed on the balcony, and as soon as he saw Su Qingya, he asked her what happened. Su Qingya was startled, and as she nervously replied that it was okay, she asked him why, and Lin Feng explained that they heard screams from below. Averting her gaze, Su Qingya nervously responded that maybe it was a cockroach because she's afraid of insects. Even though he was a bit doubtful, Lin Feng agreed and assured that Su Qingya shouldn't worry because he will find an insect repellent. But Yin Wudao suddenly barged into the room and guessed that it wasn't a cockroach but bed bugs, and as he asked Su Qingya if he was right, Su Qingya was horrified. Yin Wudao grabbed Su Qingya's arm, and as he questioned how there could be cigarette marks next to the ashtray and when he became sloppy, Su Qingya flinched and indicated that he was hurting her. He pointed out that the cigar ashes are gathered together, not scattered, and Su Qingya guessed that maybe it was because of the wind. Su Qingya flinched again as Yin Wudao pushed her towards the floor. Yin Wudao demanded Su Qingya how she would explain the sea sand, the sand from the beach outside the back window. He interrogated Su Qingya if he was there, her childhood lover. Su Qingya immediately denied that Yin Wudao was wrong. But Yin Wudao did not listen, and as he gathered his kai, he questioned Luo Fengyi for daring to enter his house. He materialized a huge hand with sharp claws, and as he hurled it towards the bed, he exclaimed that Luo Fengyi was looking for death. But instead of Luo Fengyi, it was Sang Bao who got his throat cut, and Luo Fengyi was alarmed when he saw that. Luo Fengyi was hiding on the chandelier, and as Sang Bao collapsed on the floor, both Lin Feng and Yin Wudao were surprised, while Su Qingya was horrified. Horror and rage filled Luo Fengyi's face when he realized what just happened, and he called Sang Bao's name. Yin Wudao was alarmed when the system suddenly warned him that Luo Fengyi was going wild and that it was recommended that he escape as soon as possible. Luo Fengyi immediately threw his knives at Yin Wudao and demanded that he must pay for it with his life. Yin Wudao released his kai as he asked what the warning was from the system, but he noted that it was more than that. However, he broke through the second level of Kowloon True Kai last night. 
He used his skill, body armor, and declared that it was enough to overcome Luo Fengyi's 36 flying blade lotus. Luo Fengyi charged at Yin Wudao, and as he questioned him if he was very confident, he declared that he would let him try his technique. He used his skill, 36 flying blade lotus, and Yin Wudao was slammed into the floor as it broke through his defense. As he stood back up, Yin Wudao acknowledged that Luo Fengyi deserves to be the main character because, as expected, he has the aura of the protagonist. Yin Wudao was alarmed when he saw that Liu Fengyi was walking towards him, looking so pissed, and Liu Fengyi warned that with Yin Wudao's weak body, he really made him use his special skill. Luo Fengyi asserted that since Yin Wudao took Su Kingya and killed his brother, he deserved to die. Su Kingya stood in front of Yin Wudao, and she insisted that Luo Fengyi should stop and not kill him. Luo Fengyi was so surprised, and as he asked Su Kingya why, he remarked that Yin Wudao was the one who dominates her, yet she was protecting him again. But Su Kingya stated that she doesn't hate it, and because of that too, she was able to survive until that moment, and Yin Wudao also doesn't dominate her. Luo Fengyi was trembling in anger as he asked Su Kingya if she was in love with Yin Wudao, the villain. He was mad, and he exclaimed that Su Kingya had betrayed him. Su Kingya was on the verge of tears, and she confessed that she didn't know, but she didn't want Yin Wudao to die. Yin Wudao chimed in, and he observed that it seems that Su Kingya's relationship with Luo Fengyi is special. But Su Kingya immediately clarified that it is not like that and he shouldn't get her wrong because she was just treating Luo Fengyi as a brother. Luo Fengyi laughed bitterly when he heard Su Kingya call him brother. He turned mad and declared that Yin Wudao not only took Su Kingya's body, he even took her heart, and he hates that he stole his lover, and he hates him for killing his brother. Luo Fengyi threw another knife and vowed that Yin Wudao must die that day. Yin Wudao and Su Kingya were both horrified when they saw the knife coming at them, and Yin Wudao inquired where Lin Feng was. Lin Feng fired his gun and announced that he was there. The bullet hit the blade of the knife, and it changed trajectory. Lin Feng called Luo Fengyi a bastard who wants to take Su Kingya. He fired multiple shots, and as Luo Fengyi dodged those bullets, he questioned Lin Feng why he was helping the villain Yin Wudao when he was a warrior king. Lin Feng finished the round of bullets, so he released the mags on the guns in his hand simultaneously. The mags fell towards the ground. Lin Feng reloaded a different set of mags without letting the guns go, and as he challenged Luo Fengyi why he was calling Yin Wudao a villain, he argued that Yin Wudao is a dignified man. But instead, Luo Fengyi trapped his siblings, killed his adoptive mother, and forced his biological father to die, so he was lower than a pig. Luo Fengyi threw another set of knives at Lin Feng, and he declared that they would fight to the death. Lin Feng fired at those knives, and he boasted that with the gun in his hand, he could beat Luo Fengyi, so his daggers were useless in front of him. Luo Fengyi threw another set of daggers, and he asked Lin Feng if he could hold it. Lin Feng immediately fired his gun in response to what Luo Fengyi had done. Lin Feng's bullets greeted Luo Fengyi's daggers. Luo Fengyi was astonished when he saw that his daggers had changed trajectories and were stuck on the floor. He remarked that, as expected of the warrior King Lin Feng, his gunship is very skilled. Lin Feng aimed his gun at Luo Fengyi's head, and he declared that it was a checkmate. He asked Yin Wudao what they should do about Liu Fengyi, and Liu Fengyi demanded that if they wanted to kill him, they should kill him with honor. Su Kingya chimed in, and she begged Yin Wudao to let Liu Fengyi go. Yin Wudao suddenly grabbed Su Kingya's face, and he asked her to give him a reason why he must let Liu Fengyi go. Su Kingya looked away as she bashfully offered that she was willing to serve Yin Wudao forever. But Yin Wudao threw Su Kingya towards the floor, and he retorted that it would be in her dreams. He stated that if Su Kingya really can't forget it, he will fulfill it, so she should go with Liu Fengyi. Su Kingya tried to reach out to Yin Wudao, and she pleaded that she didn't want to, but Liu Fengyi grabbed her by the arm and urged that they should go. As he dragged Su Kingya out of the room, Luo Fengyi grinned, and he sneered that Yin Wudao would regret his decision. Meanwhile, the system notified Yin Wudao that the destroy Luo Fengyi quest completion rate was at 90%, and he could get better rewards. The system showed Yin Wudao the 36 flying blade lotus, and it inquired if he wanted to copy or force take it. Yin Wudao quickly chose to force take it, and he declared that he shouldn't miss the opportunity. Luo Fengyi's 36 flying blade lotus materialized in front of Yin Wudao, and he looked pleased. Yin Wudao closed his eyes, and the 36 flying blade lotus was imbued in his mind. On the other hand, just outside the residence, Liu Fengyi suddenly knelt on the ground, and he was alarmed as he muttered that he felt very weak and asked what it was. Suddenly, Su Kingya called Liu Fengyi's attention, and she urged that he should go alone. Luo Fengyi was astonished, and as he quickly turned towards Su Kingya, he inquired if she was really in love with that villain. Su Kingya yelled at Luo Fengyi and declared that Yin Wudao was not a villain because he was the one who saved her from her despair before. She recalled how she was being dominated by a bald man, and he informed her that she shouldn't waste her time because her father has pawned her on them, 
but she still desperately pleaded that they should let her go and asked for someone to help her. Suddenly, a metal bat hit the bald man on the head. It hit the two other men standing near the table as well. Yin Wu Dao was the one swinging the bat, and he questioned the men if it wasn't embarrassing for some big guy to bully a weak woman. Back in the present, Su King Ye inquired Luo Fengyi where he was at that time, and Luo Fengyi looked extremely dejected, and he was lost for words. Luo Fengyi looked crestfallen as he apologized to Su King Ye and confessed that he couldn't protect her properly. He walked away and vowed that he would return, take her back from Yin Wu Dao in an honest manner, and make up for what he owed her all those years. Su King Ye was crying as Luo Fengyi walked away, and she lamented that they couldn't go back. She was startled when she felt that Yin Wu Dao was standing behind her. Su Kingye quickly turned to explain to Yin Wu Dao, but she was not able to finish her sentence. Yin Wu Dao stated that since she didn't want to go, she should come with him, and that made Su Kingye happy. Su Kingye was determined, as she admitted that she had wronged Yin Wu Dao, so no matter what he asked, she would be willing to do it. But a few moments later, Su Kingye looked so shocked as he watched Yin Wu Dao drugging her drink in front of her eyes. Yin Wu Dao gave the drink to Su Kingye and commanded that she should drink it. And as Su Kingya looked at the cup in his hand, she wondered if it was her punishment and if Yin Wu Dao really wanted to do that to her. Su Kingya took the cup, and as she drank it, she murmured that she couldn't let that happen and that she couldn't act bad. When she finished her drink, Su Kingya's favorability level increased to 95, which is infatuation. Suddenly, Su Kingya asked why she felt dizzy. As Su Kingya lost consciousness on the couch, Yin Wu Dao grabbed a blanket and commented that a woman's heart is indeed confusing, and it was still 3 o'clock, so Su Kingya should go to sleep. Yin Wu Dao placed the blanket over the unconscious Su Kingya, and he remarked that it was a matter between men and had nothing to do with her. As they walked out of the room, Yin Wu Dao explained that if the grass is not eradicated by the roots, it will grow again, and Lin Feng, who was following him, replied that he was still evil. Evening came, and while Luo Fengyi was standing on a port alone, he declared that he would come back to Zhang Cheng again, and at that time, he would take back everything that should be his and kill everyone who got in his way. Suddenly, a boat with two people on board came, and Luo Fengyi stated that it had finally arrived. But as one of the men got off the boat, Liu Fengyi was so surprised when he saw that it was Yin Wu Dao that he couldn't help but ask him why. Liu Fengyi was horrified, and as he exclaimed that Yin Wu Dao had promised Su Kingya to let him go, Yin Wu Dao assured that Liu Fengyi should rest assured that Su Kingya would never know if he killed him. Liu Fengyi immediately threw a dagger at Yin Wu Dao and called him a bastard. But Yin Wu Dao just dodged the dagger effortlessly, while he responded, of course, and Lin Feng, who was startled when he saw what happened wondered why Luo Fengyi was suddenly not using his flying knife technique. Yin Wu Dao summoned the 36 flying blade lotus. He twirled it above his head, and he explained that combining 9 dragons true kai to make a 36 flying blade lotus is very compatible. Yin Wu Dao asked if Luo Fengyi was familiar with that. Luo Fengyi was startled, and he admitted that it looked familiar, but he couldn't remember. Yin Wu Dao grinned when he heard what Luo Fengyi confessed. He used the 36 flying blade lotus and 9 dragons true kai and threw them at Luo Fengyi. As they looked at the dead Luo Feng, Lin Feng inquired Yin Wu Dao how he could use the 36 flying blade lotus technique. Yin Wu Dao proudly proclaimed that he just learned, and Lin Feng looked disgusted as he accused if Yin Wu Dao was lying. But in his mind, he was admiring Yin Wu Dao and thinking that it was so great while his loyalty level increased to 80, which was still amazed. The system notified Yin Wu Dao that the completion rate of the destroy Luo Feng Yi task was at 100%, so he was rewarded with one vanity point, and when Yin Wu Dao saw that, he wondered if he only got that and if the system was too stingy. Yin Wu Dao grinned as he recalled that when he was killed by the Dragon King, a beautiful woman appeared, and as he wondered if that should be Miss System, he mused that she was really hard to forget, so it looked like it was time for him to develop another function of the system. A pigs and other animals' heads were on a table. Yin Wu Dao was offering them at the shrine in the Ziaju River, and as he stood in front of the altar, he declared that he, the disciple, sincerely asked the system master to show their spirit and descend to the mortal world to enlighten him. The altar had a tablet for the holy god system manifestation, and Yin Wu Dao proclaimed that on that day, thanks to his master's help, the Miss System's very pretty appearance made him dream about it. Yin Wu Dao smiled sleazily as he stated that if Miss System could show mercy, he pleaded that she show him her spirit to satisfy that absurd, despicable thought of his. Miss System came out of Yin Wu Dao's pendant. She remarked that it turned out her king loved her so much that he acted embarrassingly, and at first, she wanted to wait for him to be able to unlock it, but since he was being so honest, she would make an exception. Yin Wu Dao started drooling, and he responded that it was no problem. Miss System responded that it was enough, and as expected of the villain, she is very satisfied. 
He and Wu Dao wiped the drool off his face as he called Miss System, and he expressed that he, the crook, has something to ask for. Miss System was startled when Yin Wu Dao bowed at her and requested that she open the hidden functions of the villain system, for which he would be very grateful. Miss System looked annoyed, and as she asked Yin Wu Dao if he was thinking too much, she stated that the system would be developed step by step and he could only unlock new functions if he continued to successfully complete tasks and meet the requirements. Yin Wu Dao was speechless and he looked pissed as he grabbed his necklace. He took off the necklace and as he asked Miss System if that was her hiding place, she was taken aback and she asked him what he wanted to do. Yin Wu Dao placed his necklace on a tin-based box and he explained that nuclear radiation can't even penetrate that box so a spirit body like hers shouldn't be able to. He snapped his fingers, and a huge enclosure came down to trap them. The enclosure landed on the floor with a loud thud, and Miss System panicked as she asked Yin Wu Dao what he was trying to do. Yin Wu Dao explained that it was a specially made cube in which light cannot propagate, and Miss System's spirit body should be based on light. Miss System immediately ran away to escape the enclosure. But she bumped into the enclosure, so she jumped back and asked Yin Wu Dao what happened and why she couldn't break through the wall. Miss System immediately used her skill, the five sacred mountains of Sanchen, magical law techniques. But Yin Wu Dao slammed his foot on the floor. Miss System was surprised when she saw that her skill had dissipated. Yin Wu Dao started walking forward, and he explained that Miss System shouldn't waste her time because he has coated the surface of the wall with steel, and it also applies to all areas there. He loomed over Miss System and demanded that she stop fighting and just give up and open all the functions in the system, and Miss System responded that he was cruel. Miss System responded that Yin Wu Dao is arrogant, and since he dared to threaten such a great system, she will make him pay dearly. She started to dissipate like smoke. Yin Wu Dao was surprised when Miss System disappeared, and he acknowledged that she was really something. He was unaware that Miss System was already behind him, ready to launch an attack, and she cursed that he was a bastard that should go to hell. Miss System placed her palm on Yin Wu Dao's back, but, to her surprise, her attack had no effect on Yin Wu Dao. Yin Wu Dao smiled sinisterly as he explained that it was true that according to system rules, as long as the host doesn't fail in executing a mission, the system won't be able to attack them. He reached out to grab Miss System and asked her if she mentioned that it would be okay after looking like that, and Miss System screamed. Bringing out a remote that has an indicator that says minus 40 degrees, Yin Wu Dao explained that he would guess that Miss System will keep trying different kinds of techniques, but at the moment, he is going to show her the power of science. Strong air started to get blown into the room, and without letting go of Miss System, Yin Wu Dao explained that when the temperature is far below zero, everything in the world will freeze, even light, and it just so happens that Miss System is not pure light, so the temperature is low enough to let her out. Yin Wu Dao was amused when he realized that he was grabbing Miss System's bosom, but he still asked if he was not holding her neck. Miss System looked so embarrassed, and as she called Yin Wu Dao a bastard, she demanded that he should let go because it hurts her. Yin Wu Dao immediately pulled his hand away, and as he apologized, he noted that he couldn't see her earlier, but he looked so happy while staring at Miss System's bosom. At the small torture room next to the river, someone remarked that it was freezing cold and the temperature was dropping so fast that he had to move as fast as he could or he would freeze to death too. It was Yin Wu Dao, and as he lit up his cigarette with the hot metal plate he was holding, he mentioned that Su Gai, the one he called Miss System, turned out to be a system administrator, and as he asked her why she chose him when there were many people, he demanded that she should tell him what exactly the god-tier arch-villain system wanted from him. Su Gai revealed that Yin Wu Dao is actually the reincarnation of Emperor Fu, and she is his little sister Su, and she is there to help him regain his glory. But Yin Wu Dao smacked the hot metal plate on the chair in between Su Gai's legs, and he insisted that she should speak the truth. Su Gai got scared when Yin Wu Dao aimed the hot metal plate in her face, so she confessed that throughout history, villains have been exterminated by the sons of God in the past, and the God-tier arch-villain system was the collection of grievances of all villains after their deaths, so her role was to use the system to turn Yin Wu Dao into a God-tier villain and eliminate all those geniuses. Yin Wu Dao threw the hot metal plate away while looking intently at Su Gai, and as he observed that the little pearl looked so tempting, Su Gai panicked, and she asked Yin Wu Dao what he wanted to do. As he reached out to grab Su Gai's bosom, she protested that he was not human and that he even wanted a system. But Yin Wu Dao was unfazed by what she declared, so she gave in and promised that she would help him unlock hidden features immediately. The system immediately displayed Yin Wu Dao's information, which indicated that the shop was unlocked, and it also explained that there are seven levels in the villain system. Emperor, King, Duke, Marquis, Earl, Viscount, and Baron, which is Yin Wu Dao's current level, and he could increase it by accumulating vanity points. Yin Wu Dao was looking intently at the system screen, and he noted that he understood everything else, but he didn't know what the reputational points meant. 
Sugai explained that reputation points could be exchanged for items at the mall, and Yin Wudao asked her how to collect reputation points. She clarified that there are two ways, one was to make people admire him, while the other was to make people afraid of him. And when Yin Wudao heard that, he acknowledged that it was to collect fan scores and fright scores. Yin Wudao decided that he would check if there was anything good in the store, and the system screen displayed the items available. Booster potion, repair potion, healing potion, detoxification pill, penetration, which was an additional, perspective eye, which could be used for a time period teleportation, which was permanent, and Buddha stone and true Confucianism, which were durable, with their corresponding prices. He noted that it was not bad as everything was good, and in particular, the statue, Buddha stone and true Confucianism, which is durable but is a locked feature as he has insufficient level, could be used at a critical time, and it could also be called a soul-saving artifact. Removing Sugai's restraints, Yin Wudao reassured that she shouldn't be mad and that in the future, he hoped that they could be close and work together sincerely. But as soon as Su Gai was free, she slapped Yin Wudao and called him a bastard. Yin Wudao responded that if that could quell Su Gai's anger, it was fine. Looking at Su Gai, Yin Wudao could see that she has 60 points for angry, 80 for sad, 50 for shame, and 30 for regret. Su Gai immediately returned to Yin Wudao's pendant while calling him evil, and she complained that she doesn't care about him anymore. Yin Wudao just scoffed and remarked, Woman. Morning came, and at Yin Wudao's residence, something was ringing. It was the telephone, and as soon as Yin Wudao answered it, someone on the other line informed that they broke the antique, and someone was asking them to pay, so they asked Yin Wudao what they should do, and Yin Wudao instructed that if they broke it, they had to pay for it. But Yin Wudao recognized the voice, and as he asked the person on the other line if she was Lin Yiru, he reassured that she shouldn't be afraid and should tell him where she was at the moment because he will be there soon. A few moments later, at Yung Zhai, the doors of the store were closed. Lai Bin, the shopkeeper of Yung Zhai, called Lin Yiru a little witch, and he asked her if she couldn't use her hands well, why she destroyed a valuable item, and what she was going to do, to which Lin Yiru replied and denied that she didn't touch the bowl, and he was the one who let go and dropped it. Lin Yiru looked so troubled as Lai Bin questioned her for daring to reply to his words. Lai Bin grabbed Lin Yiru's head and threatened that he would beat her to death. As Lai Bin raised his hand, someone commanded that he should stop it. The person grabbed Lai Bin by the wrist and insisted that he should stop. Lai Bin was surprised when he noticed Yin Wudao, who observed that he looked like a big dog. He retracted his arm, and as he asked Yin Wudao who he was, he questioned him for daring to interfere with Yun Zhai's affairs. Lin Feng was with Yin Wudao, and as he called Lai Bin a bastard, he threatened that he would beat him to death, but Yin Wudao assured that Lin Feng shouldn't worry as he will take good care of Lin Yiru. Yin Wudao helped Lin Yiru up, and he encouraged that she should tell him what happened. Lin Yiru explained that moments before, there was someone who went up to the shop to pawn the Ming Dynasty chicken cup, and when Lai Bin took out the stock that day, he handed it over to her to study. Lin Yiru recalled that she was startled when Lai Bin called her, and as he asked her if she wanted to learn Chenghua porcelain, he instructed that she should come see it. But instead of answering his question, Lin Yiru warned that he couldn't hold such a thing with one hand because he had to be careful. Lai Bin went and touched Lin Yiru's hands, which surprised her, and with a sleazy smile on his face, he complimented that her hands are so white and soft, and he asked her what skin products she uses. He glared at Lin Yiru with a sinister smile on his face, and he let go of the chicken cup. Lin Yiru recounted that, as a result, the chicken cup fell to the ground and broke. Lai Bin called Lin Yiru a witch as he questioned her for daring to accuse him, and he stated that she destroyed the chicken cup, so she must pay for it. Yin Wudao was amused, and he remarked that with how arrogant Lai Bin is at the moment, his shame will grow later. Meanwhile, Zun Zai Xiao, a female streamer, saw what was happening, and she was amazed as she observed that the bullied girl found a handsome guy and that the scene was almost out of control as they were about to fight. An audience member on stream with the username Sister Feng commented that the handsome man must be great because appearance is justice. Another audience member with the username Paige Bohr commented that the handsome man was so cowardly that his girlfriend doesn't dare fight back when she is bullied. Another audience member with the username After 10 Handsome Boy commented that if it was him, the poor shopkeeper would be in the hospital early. And another audience member with the username Xiaoxiao's husband commented that his Xiaoxiao is beautiful. Yin Wudao was startled when the system suddenly notified him that he would get one reputation if he gave help to Yuru. He immediately noted that it looked like someone was recording the situation, and when he saw Zun Xiao, he was able to confirm it, and he explained that it was only used to collect reputation. Lai Bin was intimidated when Yin Wudao loomed over him, asked if there was no CCTV there, and commented that in the end they would be able to find out who destroyed it. Lai Bin apologized and mentioned that, unfortunately, the camera was broken, but Yin Wudao noticed a young man standing behind Lai Bin who had a glum look on his face. Yin Wudao gestured at the young man and directed that he should come forward. 
But the young man panicked and immediately protested that he didn't know anything, so he shouldn't ask him. Two bundles of money suddenly fell onto the table. Ian Wuda was the one who threw those bundles of money and he declared that it would all be the young man's if he revealed the truth, which surprised both the young man and Lai Bin. Lai Bin was horrified, and he immediately called the young man, whose name was Xiao Zhang, and urged that he should think about what he should disclose, not talk nonsense about what he shouldn't divulge, and not mess with a little money. More bundles of money were thrown on the table. Xiao Zhang looked so excited when he saw the stack of money, and Yin Wudao stated that he would give it to someone else if he didn't talk. The system notified Yin Wudao that his reputation had increased by three while Xiao Zhang was trembling in front of the money. And when Lin Feng asked Yin Wudao why he was paying them when it was not their style, Yin Wudao advised that he shouldn't hurry because he will have a chance for that later. Xiao Zhang agreed that he would speak, and as he showed them the laptop with the CCTV footage, he revealed that it was Lai Bin who broke the bowl himself and blamed Lin Yuru. It showed that Lai Bin was troubled when he broke the bowl, and as he asked himself what he should do, he confessed that it was Ming Cheng Hua Daokai's chicken pot worth hundreds of millions. Lai Bin put the pieces back together and he muttered that he would light up the new girl. Ian Wudo asked Lin Feng if he can't hold back, and as he demanded that he should destroy, both Lin Feng and Lai Bin were startled. Meanwhile, on the stream, an audience named Jun Piox who commented that sure enough, there is no such thing as absolute loyalty as just a few money won't be enough. Another audience named Sit on the BMW and Cried commented that it was the ability of ban notes and laughed. And another audience named Thousands of Fathers also have fathers asked if it was the way the rich do things and commented that they should never underestimate the power of money as there is nothing that couldn't be solved with it. Meanwhile, Lin Feng charged forward with a bat when Yin Wudao commanded that they should beat Lai Bin. Lin Feng wreaked havoc on the shop and broke a lot of things inside. When Lai Bin saw that, he asked Lin Feng if he was crazy and if they knew whose business it was, and Lin Yuru was astonished when he called her a witch and warned that she should stop him or he would kill her. Suddenly, Yin Wudao grabbed Lai Bin's arm, and as he declared that he had been holding onto it for a very long time, he asked if it was the hand trying to touch his Lin Yuru and also hit her. Yin Wudao glared at Lai Bin and asserted that those hands were no longer necessary. Lai Bin's hands let out a loud cracking sound. He screamed in pain as his hands were mutilated. On the other hand, Lin Yuru looked so pleased. Lin Yuru's favorability level increased by three, which is love, and she praised that Yin Wudao was very domineering and handsome. Meanwhile, Yin Wudao was surprised when the system notified him that his reputation had increased by 1,000, 2,000, and 5,000, respectively, and he asked how he could get so much livestream popularity at the moment. On the other hand, Zunzai Excel looked so surprised when she saw that her views online increased up to 20,000 until they reached 40,000, and she noted that her 18th little livestream was so crowded. The livestream was flooded with comments, and one audience member named Bor Courtyard commented that everyone should stand up and apologize to the male lead because he's not stupid and he's a smart man. Another audience member named Needle Doesn't Pierce commented that the shopkeeper was too body and threatening the male protagonist. And another audience member named Call Me Pretty Boy commented that the plot is so gross but he likes it and he loves watching it. An audience member named Avalokitesvara appears commented that although the male protagonist is right, he is too cruel, and they asked if that wasn't bad. And another audience member named Cow County People commented that as soon as they entered, they saw a light, and they were aiming right at that part. Looking at the comments, Zunzai Xiao looked so worried, and as she observed that it didn't look like acting and Lai Bin's finger was completely broken, she wondered if she should call the police. Lai Bin threatened that Yin Wudao is done because it was the Bai family's industry, and if they offend the Bai family, they will all be drowned. Suddenly, someone was kicked in the shin. It was Lai Bin who had been kicked by Yin Wudao, and as he screamed in pain and complained that his feet really hurt, and that Yin Wudao would regret it, Yin Wudao retorted that he was the one who challenged him. Meanwhile, at the livestream, an audience named Wild Boar Courtyard asked if it was the Bai family in Zhongcheng and commented that it was one of the four major families in Zhongcheng. Another audience named Big Five commented that in Zhongcheng, offending the Bai family meant a stalemate. And another audience named Cal Beast commented that the male lord has been fishing for a scorpion, so they should keep 10 seconds of silence. A lady arrived and asked who dared cause trouble in her Yunxijai and if he wanted to mess around Zhang Cheng. And when Lai Bin saw her, he immediately called her big lady and exclaimed that the eldest lady is there, so all of them bastards are done. Lin Yuru nervously expressed that they should go because the Bai family is very powerful and she doesn't want Yin Wudao to get involved in that matter as she was in trouble, so he should let her fix it herself. But Yin Wudao was unfazed, and he just smirked. Lin Yuru was surprised when Yin Wudao called the lady Bai Yunxi, and when he mentioned that her parents aren't dead yet, he asked her if she wanted to be the chairman. Bai Yunxi was the Bai family heir, and when she recognized Yin Wudao, she couldn't help but ask if he, a bastard, wasn't dead yet, and she exclaimed that it was impossible. 
The two of them held each other's arms, and when Yin Wudao addressed Bai Yunxi as Aunt Yun and stated that he really missed her, Bai Yunxi retorted that it was okay to lie to the little girls with his mouth, but he couldn't lie to her. Lai Bin was terrified, and as he wondered what the situation was, he realized who Yin Wudao was, and he immediately confessed that he was done. On the other hand, Lin Yuru looked skeptical, and she observed that it turned out that they knew each other and that their relationship seemed special. Bai Yunxi sat down on a chair. She requested them to tell her what happened. A few moments later, Yin Wudao finished explaining and declared that the video exists as proof and his people have suffered, so he wanted Bai Yunxi to give him an explanation. Bai Yunxi calmly nodded and acknowledged that she understood. She immediately stood in front of her bowing employees, and as she addressed Xiao Zhang as Officer Zhang, she instructed that he could take the money and leave because he had done it once and there was no place for him in the antiques business, so he should go back home and do some small business. Xiao Zhang looked worried, and he apologized, but Bai Yunxi remarked that he shouldn't apologize because it was his choice. Lai Bin was startled when Bai Yunxi called his name. Lifting Lai Bin's chin with her feet, Bai Yunxi commented that his skill in appraising treasures is recognized by the family, and with his extraordinary talent, she originally intended to train him to become her Bai family's treasurer. But Bai Yunxi decided that giving Lai Bin a chance seemed pointless, and Lai Bin began apologizing to her. Bai Yunxi kicked Lai Bin in the face, and as she criticized that he was very stupid, she questioned him for daring to embarrass himself in Yunxi Jai. She asked Lai Bin why he wanted that hand when he couldn't even hold a bowl, and she demanded that they should cut his hand. A man immediately pulled out a huge knife. Two other men held Lai Bin down. Lai Bin trembled on the ground, and as his hands were cut off, Bai Yunxi turned to Yin Wudao and inquired if he was satisfied with it. Yin Wudao turned to Lin Yuru, who looked horrified, and asked her if she was satisfied to which she immediately replied and confirmed that she was. Meanwhile, in the livestream, an audience named Wild Boar Page commented that all should kneel and worship the boss. Another audience named Loving Clothes asked what the origin of the male protagonist was that even the Bai family had to give face to him. And another audience named Wu Wukai commented that his face hurts so much as the male protagonist only looks like Chen Baekshuan. Zun Xiao looked so excited as she looked at the comments, and she was chanting in her mind that they should continue to post. Suddenly, Zun Xiao was notified that the livestream has been banned for bloody violence and the total number of viewers was 280,000, so a price of 21 million coins was received. And when Zun Xiao saw that, she got mad as she questioned that Daodu Steam blocked her livestream room again, but she remarked that if it weren't for the bounty, she wouldn't have forgiven them. On the other hand, the system kept notifying Yin Wudao that his reputation had increased by 20k, 40k, and 100,000 consecutively. And when the system notified him that his total reputation points were 215,004, Yin Wudao noticed that the reputation value suddenly disappeared, and he wondered if the live broadcast was over. Meanwhile, Sugai appeared and inquired why the reputation value suddenly increased so much and if there was a bug in the system, but Yin Wudao simply smirked and commented that Sugai knew nothing about live streams. Yin Wudao asked Bai Yunxi to confirm if the chicken pot was costly, to which Bai Yunxi replied and explained that more than 10 years ago, that chicken pot was auctioned for a sky-high price of 280 million, and according to the contract, she had to pay 10 times as much. She stated that Yin Wudao also knew that it was not easy for her, who is a woman, to be able to make money for her family, but she lost money instead. Yin Wudao offered that maybe he could help her. Bai Yunxi cheered up, and as she asked Yin Wudao if he was serious, she promised that if he really helped her, Yunxi Jai would give him an antique shop. While Yin Wudao declared that he would try his best, Lin Yuru was astonished, and she couldn't believe that Bai Yunxi would give such a great antique shop. A few moments later, Lin Feng asked Yin Wudao why he wanted to help them again when they had just destroyed their shop and made a mess. Yin Wudao asked Lin Feng if Bai Yunxi blamed them for destroying the shop and explained that she cut off Lai Bin's hand to explain to Lin Yuru and give them face, so if that was the case, there was no way they could just leave it. He clarified that as long as they gave them face to each other, everyone could fix it, and when Lin Feng heard that, he wondered if it was the unspoken rule of high society. Suddenly, the system notified Yin Wudao that the purchase of improvement potions was successful, and 10,000 was deducted. So he had 205,004 remaining reputation points, and when the potion appeared in his hand, Yin Wudao marveled that it really appeared out of nowhere. Pouring the potion into the chicken pot that was carefully assembled, Yin Wudao looked nervous as he recited that according to the instructions for use, he should simply pour it on the damaged item and use the potion to recover it successfully. 